Uh huh. Right. Just on your hands? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you missed the note. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh, I'm so nervous. Um, okay, so my name is Janelle Rose and I am from Grand Prairie, Texas. I'm 23 years old and um, I'm really excited about this video and this shoot because I'm talking about something that's very personal and very passionate um, to me and I'm really big on mental health awareness as well as just overall mind, body, and soul healthiness. Um, so first and foremost, I actually struggle with trichotillomania and body dysmorphia. Um, for any of those of you who don't know what that is, it is a disorder. First of all, trichotillomania is a disorder where whenever you go through stressful or anxious moments, um, a lot of people tend to pull out their body hair. And it's something that I've, I've struggled with since I was about four years old. And um, it just took a lot out of me and it took a lot of toll out of me because it's not something that's normal and it's not of the norm. And I feel like growing up, it was such a bad thing to talk about and to acknowledge because, you know, the world on the outside is so ignorant to a lot of things. And, and you know, when you're different and you have disabilities or you go through, you know, times where you just where you're sick and you don't look like everybody else, you don't feel like everybody else. It is very, very hard. Um, a lot of my earliest memories start from about when I was in elementary school. I was actually bullied a lot for it. And when I was younger, I actually didn't have eyelashes or eyebrows. Um, so, you know, it was really hard because... <sighs> I'm getting nervous, sorry. <laughs> but it's just really hard because it, it, was, it was a lot for somebody who is so young to take on at such a young age and to deal with it and to, to get it from school and then to have to hear it when you get home about you know, everybody pointing out how different and how obvious it is that you look. And it's just really, it was, it was a lot. It was, it was kind of disappointing at some point um, for me because I always felt like, you know, what was wrong with me and why, why, why is this me and why does this happen to me? Um, and when I was younger, it was actually manic to where I couldn't really control it as well. And it wasn't until I got into high school that I actually was able to get it kind of under control, but not really. So, you know, it, it, I'm 23, like I said earlier, and I'm still struggling with it, still battling it, and still having to deal and, and figure out, you know, what do I do and, and, and how do I change habits to where I don't feel the need to go through those moments of pulling out my hair. Um, and with that came a lot of depression. Growing up, I want to say when I was about 7 to 10, around that age range, maybe even a little bit younger, I actually used to think about death a lot and I would just wonder what it would be like to die and what it would be like to, you know, even maybe even kill myself because I felt like it was really hard on my family and it was hard on, you know, me especially because I couldn't handle the outside world and like norms and, and beauty standards. Even as a kid, you know, people would judge you and you have family members that judge you and you have you know your parents friends that ask questions and everybody around you is just you know it's just again that ignorance of not being respectful not understanding that you know it's not like i'm a freak like it was something that that just wasn't really understood and wasn't really controlled and there's not a lot of research or there wasn't at least a lot of research behind it i remember my mom actually telling me that when she took me to doctors you know doctors would tell her that i was just going to end up slow or that i was going to you know, have issues in school academically, but it was never just the idea of oh, it's stress, it's 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 change, it's anxiety, it's it's childhood trauma coming out in the form of this disorder that I have, and um, you know, it was, it was really tough. And I just remember, I there's just one specific memory that I have when I was about eight, and I actually went to the eye doctor to go get glasses. And maybe this is why I don't like staring people in the face because I have a really, really huge issue with it. Um, especially when I talk to people, I won't look at you in the face. But I remember the doctor just looked in through the lens and was checking my eyes. And he asked me, he was like, why don't you have eyelashes? And I remember just being like, okay, I don't have eyebrows either. Like, why are you going to ask me now about my eyelashes? And so I kind of gave him the response of like, 
kind of like what I what I do and it was it was really hard because I didn't really want to talk about it and it's not something that I'm comfortable even speaking about that much um and I remember he just laughed at me like at eight years old just laughed at me and so just (laughs) it's not funny I laugh because I'm nervous but it's just stuff like that that you know really bothered me and so by the time I got to middle school you know I was like I'm gonna try to make changes and that's really where I started to really try to control the pooling Um, And I, you know, I had eyebrows for the most part and I looked normal enough to get by. And that was just always my thing was looking just right to get by, to get past, you know, the questions, the stares and everything else. But I want to say in fifth grade when I was 10, I know I keep jumping back and forth, but um, I actually started pulling out the hair on my head, which I remember it like. I can I just have the memory in my head and I just I don't really know what triggered it I don't know what happened I think I was just sitting in math class and I just did it and ever since then like that's I've been struggling with that also and probably that's been my worst so by the time that I was in seventh grade um during Christmas break my mom and my dad really or really my family just really felt like it was best for me to just cut off all my hair To me, looking back, why that made sense, honestly, I don't know, because if I think about it, how it was, it wasn't as bad as as it as it came to be once my hair was cut off, because I guess with my disorder and just like my symptoms with it, I knew that triggers is just like if it's if it's easy to grab, then it's easier to do. So now looking back, I was like, well, that wasn't the smartest thing to do, because one, it made my life hell when I went back to school. And two, it just didn't make sense to approach it that way. Um, And so when I got back to school after Christmas break, I remember everybody just thought I had cancer. And I was like, I don't have cancer. Like, there's nothing. I mean, there to me at the time, there was nothing wrong. Or there was something wrong with me, but there is nothing like that wrong with me. Um, And so it just really, you know, took its toll on me. And so just, I mean, as cliche as it sounds, I remember actually going during lunch and it was it just gave me so much social anxiety to go sit in the cafeteria and go to the lunch line so i would even eat lunch at school i would go sit in the bathroom or i would go sit in a teacher's classroom for lunch and it was teachers usually that i was able to trust that i told about my condition um but for the most part i just i tried to avoid it as much as i could um and so by the time i got to high school it it was much more under control even more so than before and I started wearing makeup, so that made things a little bit easy. Um, but you know, people still ask questions, people are still ignorant, people still wanna know your business so that they can go talk about you, so that didn't make it any easier, because when you're in high school, you know, it's just, it's, it's just hard, it's like, it's the dip before the real world. I, I always say, like, high school kind of sets you up for what life is gonna be like, because in real life, outside of, you know, school and having a real job, no one's nice to you, no one's, no one's nice, no one's gonna have, you know, sympathy for the things that you go through because everybody goes through something, right? And so I think when I was 14, I remember that I had told a friend at the time about um, my condition. And I was just like, yeah, you know, I have it. And, and, you know, it's just, it's, it was kind of hard because I also started dancing. And my dance coach was like, you know, why don't you guys, we're gonna teach you guys how to put on eyelashes today. And I remember just being like, uh, I can't put on eyelashes and she just looked at me and she was like well why it's like my coach and in front of like 40 other girls I was like well I don't have any and she looked at me and she was like well why not so it's kind of like forcefully I had to say why I didn't have eyelashes um and so that it just made me uncomfortable so when I had told this friend about it apparently um it came back to me years later that you know, my other friends, even friends at the time and friends that I had through high school, friends, um, they had knew that she had said something about it and was just adding on lies and adding, you know, fabricating the story more than what it was. And they, and they were honest and they told me that they made fun of me, you know, behind my back even. And I was just like, I mean, like nobody thought to ask me, you know, OK, she said this and, and what what's really going on, because it's just something so personal for me it's not if I tell somebody about it it's not your place to really say anything it's just how I saw it like I'm not gonna talk about 
you know, somebody else's flaws or somebody else's issues just because they told me about it. It's not my place to do that. Um, and so it was just, it was just really disappointing. And so by the time that I graduated, even, you know, after the fact, I just knew that I wasn't going to let it take over my life. But in a lot of ways with school, school was one of my biggest stressors. And so I went through a lot of moments of just heavy, heavy depression, stress and anxiety and suicide because I just didn't know how to handle it all. And I felt like I couldn't. And I felt like there was no one that I could really rely on. Um, because anytime I, I would make comments, you know, or say something or express how I feel, it was like I was wrong for feeling that way. I was wrong to be overly stressed. I was wrong to be depressed. I was wrong to be anxious. I was wrong to have suicidal thoughts. Like all of that was wrong. And so, you know, I never felt comfort in even seeking help. And when I got to college, either because my body dysmorphia really, 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 really developed then, I had, I was in a five year relationship with an ex. And I was still dancing at the time, it was freshman year of college, and he got really into working out. And so I remember, you know, one day he asked me to come with him, and I was like, yeah, we can go work out. Like, you know, there's nothing else to do. What else do you do as a college student in a small town? Um, and so we would go work out a lot, like frivolously. I want to say about four, maybe five days a week, just squatting and, and doing heavy lifting and things like that. And then I just kind of realized that he became obsessive about it, and it kind of just triggered that nitpickiness of me starting to pick out things about myself that I didn't like because in my mind he was developing and looking great and I wasn't really doing much like my progress wasn't as quick and then he just had this standard of like what he liked and what 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 physique he wanted out of out of me or not even out of me I don't even think I think just out of a woman in general um what he was specifically looking for even though now in 2019 that's absolutely not even like what he's dating so it's just like for me I it just look it just makes me laugh because looking back I was so focused on it and it just made that unhealthy just it was it was four years and a half of, of unhealthiness of me just trying to to feed into that into that want into that need of wanting to look like somebody that I wasn't you know I wanted a smaller chest I wanted the tiniest waist I wanted like a huge ass pretty much <laughs> like just like what you would see online and what was popping like that's what I thought that that's what I should be and then um you know so then I, I kind of realized it and I think you know it was for the better that um actually last year around this time I broke my foot so I think it was for the better that I did that because it took me out of the gym. It took me out from that pressure and that stress. And I just started to, I just really started to focus on me. And, um, you know, with, with body dysmorphia, with trichotillomania, the hair pulling, with social anxiety and having depression, um, I, I really, I knew that I needed help. And so it wasn't until I had a full on mental breakdown about June of 2018-ish, and I had to call into work because there was no way that I was going to work after that. I mean, worst of the worst, throwing up, headache, you know, it was just really, really ugly. And, um, you know, at this time, I was still self-harming a lot, so I would like, oh, this is just so hard to talk about, oh my God. but I would, um, it was... I was still self-harming a lot, and whenever I would get really, really angry, instead of trying to take it out on everybody else, I would always take it out on myself because I felt so negative and so bad about myself that I felt like, you know, I was I was worthless to even me. Like in my mindset, I was worthless, and so I would I would do things like, you know, I would stab myself with pencils or pens, or um, you know, like harm myself, just really, 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 really ugly and bad things that I don't really outside of therapy like to really discuss um but it was it was it was really hard so it was just one of those mornings and um I just remember her telling me why don't you go to therapy on campus I think you should go um the school offers it it's, it's technically paid for through your tuition so why don't you just go and I mean the first day that I went I was in there for an hour and a half just spilling out everything like everything I was going through and I and I always start whenever I 
I explain my anxiety, the people I always start with, the hair pulling thing. And, and I knew going to therapy that they have the, the skill and the knowledge and the degree and the background to work with people who are like me. And my therapist was like, you know, you're normal. Like I remember him just telling me, you're, you're so normal. You're just going through life struggles, but just because you have anxiety and depression and you're suicidal and you, and you, you pull out your hair, that doesn't make you any different. And I just remember sitting there being like, no, I'm not normal. Like, there's no way that I'm normal by any means. I know that I'm not. And we were just going back and forth. And he asked me, well, you know, what doesn't make you normal? And I'm like, hello, the obvious, what you just stated. And he was just like, no, you know, that can, that can be fixed. That can be, or not fixed, but it could be, it could be brought down to such a lower level to where, you know, it's not as bad and it's not as stressful on you because you know we can do this he was like let's yeah let's let's tackle this let's let's get started and so that's when he explained to me about cognitive behavioral therapy and changing habits and and thinking positively and really um really learning to to work with my emotions and learn how to communicate so that I wouldn't have to go through pulling out my hair the, when I when I'm frustrated or when I'm when I'm stressed or when I'm going through all these things, um, and so by the end of the summer, I had actually started seeing two therapists, and I was going twice a week for an hour and a half sessions um, every single week, just back to back to back, and and I really did learn to change a lot of my habits, and I really learned not to put my problems on everybody else or not to not question why nobody could be in a sense like me because I'm very for the most part and if you actually you know for my friends and you know for anybody that actually knows me um I'm very nice I'm a very nice person I don't really you know unless you really are out to harm me or my family and people that I care about for the most part I'm I'm, I'm very nice and I'm a, I'm a sweet soul and I don't you know I just I'm not as feisty as it as people can think I am I'm just, it's just not me um and so I just learned to, to take that and put it towards myself and to be nice to myself and to love myself and to really focus on me and, and taking care of my mental health because that was the biggest thing and that was the biggest struggle all these years. And so we got to tackling a lot of, we got to tackling a lot of um, my you know, trauma from my childhood and things that I went through and, and bad things that happened around me and things that I saw and it just changed my mind for the better it just changed my life for the better and you know it's it's just been very it's it's been a very hard journey and i figured that um at this point in time i don't have anyone i'm not in a relationship so i don't have anybody to really answer to and to to give those expectations to and you know and i'm not looking for that because again that's unhealthy and that feeds into that you know that that anxious side of me that I don't it's just the ugly part and it gets so ugly so fast and it's just not something that I really really want to get back into um and so you know now more than ever being alive and being here and being healthy and living it's just it's so important for me to just tell my story because it's just like I always I always wanted to feel a part of everybody else, but I can't feel a part of everybody else if I'm always hiding that part of me because that's who I am and that's who I'm always going to be no matter what, no matter how old I get, no matter where life takes me. This is, that's just such a big part of my life. And so, um, so now at this point with you know, me sharing a little bit of me and who I am and what I struggled with, from here on out... <laughs> the biggest thing that I really want to do is just be an inspiration and just talk to anyone and everyone who goes through these kinds of anxieties um you know no matter what it is no matter what you do um I also have dreams and goals for myself and there's just a lot coming up that you know 2020 is just such an exciting year for me there's a lot coming up that I just would have never thought that I would ever do in my life um, one of the biggest things is I'm, I'm, I'm planning on going to audition for Sports Illustrated, you know? So we'll see how that goes. Um, but my goal is just to get there. It's just to get there. So I really just want to continue speaking on this and speaking on 
trichotillomania and, and putting that awareness out there because I have met a few others who are like me who have the same disorder and we all feel the same way. So in order for us to really feel a part of society and you know have that support, it's best that we, you know, we come together and we just speak on it and we're honest about our personal truth. Um, and so, yeah. And so I really hope that you guys enjoy listening a little bit to my story. And um, you can definitely find me on social media. They are all, <laughs> will be linked below or in this video somehow. <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you guys so much. And I will see you guys in the next one.